Welcome to our pre-Valentine special of the Jodie Bunting podcast, where we're talking about pelvic floors with me favourite. Here she is. It's Susan Booth. Hello. Hi, hi. Lovely to be here. I'm looking forward to this conversation. We've been meaning to do this one for a while and we thought it'd be really well done if we linked it to Valentine's Day, which we're going to talk about in a minute. Now, for those of you who don't know Susan, she is a Pilates and fitness expert for the penny to postmenopausal woman, not only in Derby and Nottinghamshire, but actually all over the world now, because she's online, aren't you, darling? I am. I am online. Yeah, I do all my all of my classes and everything are to do with that age group of lady, mainly also postmenopausal ladies, because I think they're the lost women. Nobody's looking after them and they're you know potentially with 30 years in that postmenopausal year so really I'm talking to those ladies a lot as well. Now I know Susan when I used to work for her for Rosemary Connolly and we last did a podcast a couple of months ago uh, where we were talking about HRT and menopause so just a quick update on that first of all you know it's January blues are you feeling January blues are you feeling good Sue? Um, I always feel really good because I'm doing this job. This is the busiest time of year, fitness, health, well-being. Everybody wants to get on it. There's hot, so many new ladies I'm meeting this month and I'm really enjoying that. So January for me doesn't seem like a, uh, the blues, but I know ladies that have been coming into my classes are saying, oh my God, this January is going on and on and on forever. But, you know, you know, it is a thing. Anxiety and depression are one of the key symptoms of this time. And it doesn't stop when you've actually stopped your periods. This can carry on also. So again, the postmenopausal women, it's very, very prevalent in those especially anxiety so yeah it can you can feel it even more this time of year definitely how about you Jody? how are you getting on this January I'm exactly the same because I'm so busy with work and actually it's making me focus on my own health and nutrition and stuff I'm I'm on top of the world it's also my birthday week as well so <laughs> there's loads of reasons to be happy oh happy birthday Jodie thank happy you very birthday. much we won't ask you how old you are okay Not this just week. <laughs> As they say on bingo, halfway there, 45. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> well, right. many congratulations. Thank you. So... As it is, you know, the whole January blues and looking at positives and how to feel stronger. This is where I think pelvic floor comes into it, because, you know, we all know about the gut, the pelvis, you know, that whole area is actually our power zone, isn't it? Why do you think it is so important? It's so important. Well, the pelvic floor for men and women, but obviously I always talk about the women, is that there's so much more to it than we even know we've even got. So I've got a little um, model here, Jodie, if you don't oh. mind me showing the pelvis. Right. If you are watching on YouTube, just click onto the YouTube and you'll see me holding up a pr pretend pelvis. So, so let that, me just that's the me pelvic pelvis. Yes, pelvis. This is the bone. So this is the pubic bone here. These are the um, hip bones, and here's are the sit bones at the bottom there. Um, yeah. So your legs would come out of here. Sorry, here. <laughs> Get it right. <laughs> and the spine is coming out top there, and that's your sit. That's your uh, tailbone there, your coccyx. So I'm yes. going to show the pelvis, the pelvic floor. Now, it's a whole basket. Now, lots of people think it is a basket of muscles, which it is. But it's actually so much bigger than people really realise. Now, only what no, not only is it diamond shaped, and we call that my pelvic floor course the diamond pilates because of this reason. Um, it goes from sit bone to sit bone, pubic bone to tailbone, that whole vast amount of muscles there. But, and the other thing is inside there's actually three layers of muscle and there's three lots of muscle tissue that does different things so like for instance you train your bicep in a certain way because it's got long longer muscle smooth and and then you train another part of your body differently because it's got a different kind of muscle so you might do some more fast um twitch kind of muscle things this is the same so it's really important to notice know that number one point is that the muscles are are much more layered than we thought they were uh, and often when I show ladies that they're like oh really is that down there wow amazing so it's really important to know that but also there's so many jobs that the pelvic floor does not only does it hold obviously your urine in 
um, but it actually helps you control your bowel as well and bladder, as like we know. And also it helps to support your pelvic organs to stop them falling through, which we'll talk about later if you want to, is prolapse. Um, yeah. Also it stabilizes the spine and the whole of your back sort of area. And it also helps to perform sexual and reproduction function, of course, and obviously giving birth out of that area. So often people who've just had babies know all about the pelvic floor, funnily enough. Yeah. But what what I, I think is that we, we learn the pelvic floor exercises and things to do it when we're young. We've just had a baby. We're all busy. We forget to do them. And But then when you get to the menopausal years and beyond, it starts to all come back. And the reason this is, is because like all of our muscles are getting weaker when we get to this age. It's about estrogen being declined in our body. So our, our muscles are going to get weaker anyway. And that's a big muscle group, which is also getting weaker. And also your bladder is a muscle and that's getting weaker as well. So we start to notice it's happening again. And you'll see in the supermarkets loads of those pads, yeah. which many women wear um, discreetly and embarrassingly. And, they, you know, we don't need to wear those because there are things that you can do. And I think that's a big point here. You know, only one in five women seek help in, for their incontinence health. You know, what's, what about the others that aren't saying anything? Because um, they don't see a solution, do they? You're right. They just see, oh, it's time where I have the pad. You know, it's like a, a natural progression. This is what happens, but it isn't. It really, really isn't. It is very commonplace. I hear it a lot but there is things that you can do. So it's really, that's a big point. I really think uh, we need to talk about that uh, point. 40% um, of women are too embarrassed to consult the GP. They're, you know, they don't even want to go and talk to the GP. Um, and, you know, the, you've got to go through this sort of conversation with your friends. Are you talking to your friends about it? So in my groups, I really get to open the conversation because I think as a women's health, sort of health and fitness person i think i've got a duty of care for these ladies to yeah. talk, start to talk about all this kind of thing you know um are you still having sex at this age i really think this is a really big conversation and that we should be having because people feel embarrassed it's like this unknown thing that we should be doing or no you know there's no book writing that you've got to have sex five times a week when you're 75 you know what, what's happening what do you think about that jody um i well, I always think about what I saw once on TV, or, or it's quite regular on TV, the fact that the the sex drive for men starts off really high when they're young and slowly comes down. And the women's one goes the other way. So when they're teen, when they're getting, you know, they are sexual, but they get higher as they get older. So obviously well, my question to you is, if all this issue is happening with the pelvic floor, surely that can't be right then? Well, the thing is, it's about your hormones and testosterone is the driver for your libido. So if your estrogen and progesterone are down, often the testosterone can be all over the place um, and it does wane away just like a man. But sometimes it can really go up. So the other hormones are down. So this one has to like take over and some of testosterone can actually change to estrogen. That's a bit technical, but you yeah. get what I'm saying. So that means that a lot of women, some women do have that massive drive to have more at that time. And it is this testosterone that's actually giving them that oomph. But basically, that's what we call it, the oomph um, hormone. Um, so this is a big thing. But generally, women who are um, menopause and beyond, we because of the lack of estrogen, there's so many estrogen receptors around the pelvic area for obvious reasons, for sexual reasons, for um having babies and everything, making babies and stuff, um, that actually that becomes extremely dry in that area. In fact, the whole of the body becomes dry because estrogen is like a lubricant. So you might get dry eyes, dry you ears, to have a drink, dry mouth. So. Yeah, we need to drink, don't you? <clears throat> dry skin and dry vagina. Now, there's a, there's a lady on, in, um, I don't know if she's still posting on Instagram, but there was a lady called Jane Lewis, who wrote a book all about this because she realized there was a lot of ladies out there that don't um, understand themselves or and, and are embarrassed to talk about it. She, uh, the book she's written is called Me and My Menopausal Vagina. Um, so if it's worth a, a read or a, a, um, an audio, but it's extremely in detail on how she suffered from this condition since um, 
menopause, perimenopause and beyond, <clears throat> and how she dealt with it. And it's actually a really common um, issue. And it's not very nice. It's not, um, obviously, you can imagine how, how that feels. So to have sex when you've got a dry vagina yeah. is no party. Tell me. <laughs> it really is it isn't. Just, is it just about drinking more water? Is it healthy fats? Is it your whole nutrition? What's the actual issue? So there will be nutrition. Obviously, any nutrition is good for the whole of the body. But really, it's about lubricants. And it's about um, just looking after yourself, uh, you know, washing correctly. But also, you know, some uh, um, shampoos um, and shower gels actually can really irritate that area. So this lady describes that and how it really was she's terrible. She's got a real routine she has to do in the morning. And actually, she can't ever have sex again for her. She couldn't wear jeans she can't sit down for very many uh, for very long obviously hers is a severe one but you yeah. know there's all sorts of, um variations of this uh, this kind of condition anyway but um often if you go into an old people's home this is just an example um yeah. you know yeah. many, most of the women are on uh, having tenor ladies and this can be the thing that actually you know incontinence is a big thing it's very common but it can be avoided this is what i'm trying to say so if those ladies and it's never too late also because i could go into an old people's home and teach them how to do those um exercises and you can still get strong at that age you really can i mean like the rest of the body we can work out any woman man anyone at any age and your muscles will react to it um it's you know muscle protein synthesis is a bit slower as we get grow older but it is still there so this can also be trained so it's really important to know that um i think that's a really big point point. and what other types of incontinence are there Right. So we've got two kind of main types. So you've got the uh, when you're sneezing, coughing, jumping and you leak. And then the other type is if you are wanting to go to the loo, you're on a walk. Here's an example. You're on a yeah. walk and you're thinking, oh, I could just do with you get the signs, you get the signs you want to go to the loo. And then you're looking around for the low and there's no low. So you get home and you get the key in the door and you just get in there. And oh, my God, it's coming out. It's leaking. It's leaking. And that, that's called the key in the door syndrome, as I call it, or the just in case syndrome. You know, and um, this is very, very common. And this really that second one, the, the, the key in the door syndrome is actually a brain to bladder connection. There's a lot more to it than that, but it's yeah. simple to basically you think you want to go so much that you're actually tightening up your bladder tight 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 but then you actually it becomes weaker and then it goes so yeah. um again this is, these are techniques that i teach in the course um and we we have to practice it we have to practice at home we practice this at home you see lots of ladies are avoiding drinking water because they're going to go out shopping or something and they don't know where yeah. the loo is and really, really important uh, tip thing there, because we want we need to keep hy hydrated. You might find that with your ladies, that, Jodie, yeah. that they don't drink as much. And the real reason is this, because they don't want to go and find somewhere to have a wee. Um, you know, I am I have these issues myself, so I am with you and I get get it. But I have managed to manage my symptoms by doing the exercises that I teach. Um, it's an ongoing process like any kind of conditioning of the body is and mind it is an ongoing journey it's never you never it's kind of going to get there but you've just got to keep at it keep at it so uh pel i do pilates for pelvic floor but i also do talks around it with all these other extra bits as well that will uh sort of guide you into other because there's a lot so many variations of it to be honest yeah um yeah so that's now, two moment... types of in a moment, we'll talk specifically how Pilates can help them. You're also going to do a little demo this morning, which I'm really I am excited just going to about. Do, I'll just do one but, exercise, yeah, one exercise. But just to go back to the bigger picture and, you know, just, you know, sex as a subject. Yeah. Again, going back to January blues, going back to menopause, you know, sex is like chocolate. It makes you feel good, doesn't it? Well, there is definitely um, hormones that can be excreted called oxytocin. That's a feel good kind of hormone in the body. And that is when you have an orgasm. So if you can't have it with your partner, I say, look after yourself. Yeah. 
<laughs> That's all I'm saying, you know, um, and actually the uh, contractions that you have when you have an orgasm is also a pelvic floor exercise. Yeah. So it's a win win. <laughs> I always remember, I don't know whether you know Louise Hay, who's a very, um, you know, she's written lots of self-help books. And she always said that the moment you feel a headache coming on, masturbate. It is the one way, it's the one way to get rid of your headache. It's a stress reliever. So it can actually help you to really sleep well as well. Um, so, yeah, there's many uh, benefits to oxytocin release in the body. Uh, when you uh, do orgasm so you know that's another thing you feel like the joy has been sucked out of you when you're menopause so many many women do that I had two new ladies this week had long conversations with them exactly the same and it's quite um, comforting to know that everyone does kind of feel the same and that we're all in it together and if you chat it around your friends it does make you feel better it just does so um, very very important that sort of a uh, group of women together talking about these things because I don't think it's talked about enough how much sex people are having or not not having and yeah. also whether their husbands mind or not and it's kind of this unwritten thing this whole thing of um you know oh, I'm not going to talk about my sex life which you yeah, obviously don't want to know the detail but it's quite interesting to hear ladies go well god I don't do that why would I do that and you know what it's okay who says we've got to <laughs> But, if you feel happy not doing it, then why not? And your husband feels or what your partner or whatever feels OK about, you know, being together in a relationship. Is a relationship just about sex, Jodie? For gay men, it's very important sex. I just think that it's one of the, you know, key principles just to have a, a good sexual relationship really does help you bond, not only physically, but mentally. You know, that little bit afterwards where you just like you relax and you hug each other. You just get that mental connection once you've had your physical connection. And with all my partners, if the sex hasn't been right, it's never been a good relationship. It's never ended well. So I really do believe that, you know, it is one of the foundations of a good relationship. I really do. I think when you've been with someone for 30, 40, 50, 60 years, it becomes different. Um, and of course, that was a big part to start with, you know, and I think, you know, it's nice now for different reasons. Yeah. Um, it's, I don't know, long term relationship. Do you know any of your friends in a long term gay relationship? And is that the same? Is it same for them? I do have a I do have some clients that are long term gay and they saying the same as me, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't think it matters whether they're. I don't think it matters if they're heterosexual or not. They they no, I agree. You know, when you've been with the same person for the same time. You have to keep spicing it up. You have to keep introducing something different or or get stronger. Like you said, when you get fitter, like runners are, are famous, aren't they, for being quite sexually active. And that's why, because they've got all these hormones, all this testosterone, and they're just feeling good about themselves. So that's why me, you, all the fitness professionals, eating better, get, improving your lifestyle can actually help get like that. Because I also think it's it's expected that you don't have sex when you get older as well. You know, it's the norm. Oh, that's a good point. That, that's an interesting point, that? yes. Yeah, no, that's a good one. I haven't really come from that angle. Um, no, I don't think, I don't know. It depends. Obviously, this is multi-layered. We are not relationship experts, are we, Jodie? No, I'm not even married. <laughs> really, no, bless you. Um, but, you know, it's interesting to hear other people's views on this. Mainly I'm hearing, oh, I can't be bothered with that kind of attitude. I'm hearing that more than, oh, I can't wait to get home and shag my husband or whatever. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not hearing that as much. Um, I'm also, I'm not hearing loads because people are embarrassed still. And my ladies are like 50, 60, 70, 80. They're still embarrassed to talk about it. And I think it's a generational thing because I think my generations are more open. I'm 55, but I think the net, the lower generation is even more open. Do you agree? Absolutely. You are correct. 
The one person I wanted to bring up here was Carol Vorderman. She yes. has been, the last few months, she keeps going on this morning and talking about her new attitude to men. And that is she doesn't believe in a monogamous relationship. She actually admits to having five sex friends. They all know about each other. You know, she doesn't try and hide it. And that's what she loves. You know, once a, once a month, twice a twice a month, she meets up with these guys individually. They have a little bit of sex. They go out for dinner. That's it. And she's happy with that. Fair enough. That's quite good. You don't have to wash the socks or anything, do you? <laughs> Even better. Well done, Carol. See, Carol, is she the same age as me or a bit older? I don't know. Um, I think she's older. She's an incredibly sexy woman, though, isn't she? When you see her, absolutely. Absolutely oozing it and well done her. Good on her. Do you know what? The women are taking the power back. Yeah. I really believe that um, in our generation. You know, we're not standing for any rubbish anymore. It's just we do what we do for why we have to do it. And, you know, we are standalone women. We're, I think the generation above my 70, 80 year old ladies are totally different to that. And that's OK, because that's of their time. I'm not trying to change anyone. Yeah. But, you know, it's quite interesting to to observe these different generations. I think it's really important. And I think the point is, it's not that we're promoting that or saying that's the way to be happy. We're just saying there's no rule book. You don't have to do, you know, the whole 2.4 children. You don't have to stop having sex. You don't have to exercise to feel good. But Definitely. you've got to find a way for you personally to feel confident and enjoy your life. I think that's the that's the, the bigger point isn't it I, th I think this is a whole new po podcast Jody. we need to do a mindset <laughs> thing because I believe that for someone to feel happy um that and there's been studies done that when you wake up in the morning you have a purpose and you feel ready to go come on let's go we're here let, we're doing this we're doing that and these don't have to be big things that are small things um, that, that can make you feel excited and joyful because again my ladies at this age beyond especially they a lot of people talk about the uh, uh, menopause and beyond how the joy has been sucked out of them so we want to somehow get that joy back into their lives and laughter and you know find that purpose help other people I really believe those two things can uh, really accelerate your happiness but as I say they we're getting right off topic now but you know it, it, it is all related <laughs> It's the whole me and Jody both teach a whole body and mind approach. It's not just about food and exercise for Jody's weight loss and for my menopause. It's not either. It's it's a, a whole a whole mindset thing. It's the whole of your lifestyle. It's a a great you know. It's a big picture, bigger picture. And just to touch on you personally, if you don't mind, how do you think the whole menopause has affected your own sexual? journey shall we say well i'm i'm on the i'm on the i like to do it more okay <laughs> brigade probably because my kids have left home um i hope the kids aren't listening well they can listen to it. why am i who do i care um you know um i think yeah there's a new sense of freedom for me you know i did put myself into my kids growing up and that's nothing wrong with that and i would never regret that uh, again it could you people could uh, say well you that's a generational thing but actually you know they're my biggest um successes in my view but yeah. now I'm on to this stage in my life is like a next stage and it's quite it, to start with it was a bit like oh god what's happening here you know empty nesting what am I meant to do I'm I'm 50 what am I meant to do Could someone give me a book tell me what I'm meant to be doing now because you kind of know what you're doing the whole time you know what am I meant to do I'm meant to um have sex three times a week or two times I mean again there's no book so you just got to find your way but for me it's it's that it's that way really more than anything um so that's quite nice um but um you know and it does make you feel closer and it does make you feel more positive in yourself more than anything because often you know we are aging and women do age quicker than men especially at this time estrogen again lubricant keeps your face looking young all that kind of thing so you know it can really feel terrible if you you know you, your looks are going and you you don't know what to wear and you are putting weight on and all that kind of thing so, so it is a way that does give you a bit of positive uh self-belief if you like um it's just one of the ways there's lots of other ways obviously my work I really delve into that now and I love helping other people and spreading this uh information really it's really useful I feel for my happiness 
just a practical yeah. tip just to uh emphasize on it do you think lube is necessary then or not because it, yes. obviously it's a joke with gay men but is it is it yes is it needed Definitely. yes uh well for me it is <laughs> not for everybody it won't be for everybody um but it's just it's easier <laughs> yeah um and it's actually got the lubricant is called yes it's actually called yes the one there's um oil-based one or a water-based one so uh, google it and find that one uh, you don't have to go with ky jelly if you don't want to go with that yeah. these are actually specifically for women uh, who have dry vaginas so yes is the is the uh, um, name of those and obviously a sexual health note there for everybody that if you are using a oil based one it doesn't work with condoms so it needs to be a water based with condoms that's our health warning out there um <laughs> That you touched there on the conditions of how you feel. You know, you said about the kids leaving the home. And I think this is how Valentine's links in with the whole love and sex thing. Because Valentine's Day, you know, it's a commercial event. It is about going out and eating and, you know, just treating each other. But that's what leads to the sex, I think. Because, you know, once you feel good, once you feel loved, I think that's when you relax and those lovely sex hormones get released. What do you think? I think sometimes Valentine's Day is a bit like oh, we're going to do it tonight kind of thing. So I'd rather not. I'm the opposite. I'm thinking, I'm not just, you're not just going to wine and dine me and then we're just going to have sex, aren't we? Because, I mean, come on, I'm I'm 30 years in now. So I just don't know. If you're in a new relationship, that might be happening. You're like, oh, yeah, here we go. But no, it's much better impromptu. Forget that. Let's do it, like, in the middle of the day or something on Valentine's Day. If you're going to, I don't know. That's my viewpoint. That's my viewpoint. But obviously that is the thing. You're in a restaurant for Valentine's and everything's red and there's hearts everywhere. And you're like, well, you're going to do that. You're going to do that. It's a bit like, you know, I don't know. And the scientific <laughs> truth is, I love this expression. If you're not waking up in the morning with with for a guy, if you're not waking up hard in the morning, you're not healthy. And this is true. You know, our sexual uh, chemicals are released in the morning and you should be feeling horny in the morning, shouldn't you? That's right. Yes. And, and, you know, again, I don't do men, so you can tell us about this, but okay. um, testosterone in men do does also decline. There is actually a, manopo a menopause doctor for men in Harley Street in London for that very reason. So, you know, erectile dysfunction um, and they he does prescribe testosterone for them, I, I believe. Um, so, you know, that is an also thing. So if you're not feeling it and he's not feeling it that's okay why not don't bother yeah <laughs> i'm like don't bother if you don't want to you know and also um we talk a lot about sleep in my group because sleep's a big issue in menopause and i believe that you know we were ill over christmas we both had flu so i said i'll move into the spare room got a new bed it's really comfy so i quite like it got right. in there slept like an absolute log and i'm thinking why don't i just sleep in here Forever now. What? What? Who's saying we've got to sleep with each other? Yeah, if go you, in when I need. Yeah, to... if you get a better night's sleep away from him, then definitely I would recommend that. I think I don't know. Again, it's a conversation people don't have. I had a little chat about my let to my ladies. We were laughing about it, but they're like, "Oh no, we can't. We can't. I can't." I was like, "Why can't you? Have you got a spare room? Yes. Well, go and sleep in it. Why can't? Yeah. Oh, I could. I couldn't." And it is about them feeling disconnected with their partner, but not, I don't think in a sexual way, I think it's more of a mental thing for people. It's more of, oh gosh, you know, I don't know. I need more deep, deep conversation. So if there's anyone listening, do comment, let us know what you think. About I know, these. but physically, if he is, or if they are going to the toilet in the middle of the night, they're waking you up, snoring. they're snoring. Snoring. You know, if yes. it's a is if it's a physical thing that's happening, then I definitely think it's there. If it's mentally, you just can't stand to be in a bed with him, then there's a deeper different. issue. Yeah, you, need to, you need to leave the house completely <laughs> then. You see, that's another thing. What are you doing staying with a partner that just you don't, you absolutely dislike and resent? Again, over the years, I've seen this a lot in my older ladies, in my 70, 80 plus. Um, you know, when we do this kind of work, we really get to know the person very well. I don't know if you think that, Jody. You get to yeah. know their insights of all sorts of things. And there's many women, not 
a majority, but the me there's many that were being abused, um, not physically, but mentally. Yeah. And I believe it's so sad that they've had to endure that probably for the whole of their married life. There's some of them have been married 40, 50 years, 60 years, um, you know, but they felt I comfortable with me enough to tell me. I I used to try and coach them and talk to them about leaving, but they was never going to leave. They're never going to leave. Yeah. You know, there's nowhere to go. There's not there's no nowhere to go to. And what would their friends think? That's a big one. You know, I think that your the generation above me are very affected by judgment of others. I think we're less so. What do you think, Jodie? Yeah, you're absolutely right. I think, you know, the younger generation, you actually don't care what the neighbours think. And, you know, you're willing to go through this shame as you take all your stuff out of the house physically. You know, where the older generation, they just see it as they're going to be talked about. But the truth is, not many people actually care these days what the neighbours are doing. You don't know. that Most people are caring about themselves. They don't yeah. care about other people, especially the younger generation. I don't know, you know, there's a whole... It's sad. I just feel it's really sad. I mean, obviously, I'm just talking to the woman. It's two sides to every story, but I'm only talking to the women. And when I hear it, they go, well, he hasn't laid a finger on me. Yeah. I think, well, that's, forget that. If you've been mentally abused, emotionally abused for all these years, which is what a lot were saying, yeah. then, you know, no, that's the same. Get out. <laughs> well, it's, so I not, think it's the same, almost worse, because, Lee, you know, physical um abuse is you know justified you can take action where mental is so gentle it's it's like a painful death almost isn't it just ongoing relentless exactly so there's a lot on tiktok about narcissism and i yeah. think a lot of people are very aware of that if um, they're watching that's a really interesting uh, uh phenomenon um so yeah i think yeah there's a whole i think there's a real shift to change especially in sort of the last, I don't know, 20 years of my life, I'm 55, so from 35 to 55, I feel like there's a whole shift of how people are just being open about saying, speaking about things. You know, when I do this course, I'm talking about vaginas all the time and vulvas and anuses and things, and I, I, it really doesn't bother me. Some yeah. people start wincing a little bit, but I say right from the beginning, I'm going to say these words because this is the name of your bits. And why are we too shy to say that? that? You know, don't be shy. They're part of your body. Like, this is my eye. You know, this is my mouth. And this is my vagina, you know. Yeah. <laughs> right. We're now moving on to uh, the best section of the video, because this is the demo and the practical tips that you can do to make a big change in your life. So I'm going to hand you over to Sue, who's going to explain uh, all about the exercise and give you a demo. So there's a whole range of exercises that we need to do, but I'm just going to show you one element and talk about the actual Kegel exercises, which is um, tightening this area of your body, the pelvis here with the pelvic floor. Now I want you to sit down on the floor with your sit bones sitting on the floor. So I've got my little pelvis, poly pelvis here. Um, she's sitting right on a sit bones. So if you find that you're sitting in that uh, cloak, oh, I've got my Santa socks on, by the way. So oh, cute. <laughs> <laughs> if you feel like you're sitting there, you may want to put a little cushion underneath your bottom so that you're sitting up onto your pelvis. Now, you can do this sitting on a chair if you want to as well. Now, we want to be thinking about the pubic bone here, and this is where your urethra is, where you wee out of, and then you've got your vagina in the middle, and you've got your anus at the back. So there's three openings. To start with, I want you to feel that you're squeezing your anus as if you need to stop a poo coming out. Now we wanna be doing this without our buttocks tightening. So just tighten up that area, we're all doing it now. We're all do also men can do this as well. They also have the same pelvic bowl. So I'm hold doing it. and then just let it go. Now also, so we start with that. That's like the foundations. We'd spend a, a, you know, a couple of weeks just doing that and then we'd layer it on. So we're then now starting to feel like we're um, tightening the anus and then also the vagina, so the middle bit. Now, if you're a man, it's testicles to spectacles. So you think about drawing your testicles up into the center of the body. So let's try that now. So driving through and squeezing the anus and then coming forward from the back to the vagina and tightening up there. Hold it for a second. 
and then let it go. Now, the letting go is really, really important because there's a whole study of us, uh, work, body works in America, particularly, where there's a whole load of women with tight, tight, too tight pelvic floors. They've tightened them so much that though the muscle is tight for so long, it then would become completely weak. So they're actually too tight. So the relaxation part of this is also extremely important. So make sure your thighs are relaxed there as you sit down and you're just relaxing in. So we then obviously do that for a few weeks and then we start to bring the breath work into it as well. So the diaphragm works with the pelvic floor. So we'd start to do that. I'm not going to really do lots of breathing with you today, but also there's a lot of rela release techniques. So for instance, if we release our feet using um, prickly ball or whatever, or anything like kind of ball or whatever, um, and your calves particularly, these can actually help to release your pelvic floor. Even the jawline, the fascial yeah. tissue, the jawline is directly connected to that area. So we use, again, for a few weeks of that where we're just looking at uh, releasing the whole body as well. So sometimes if you've got a, sh a tight shoulder, your pelvic floor could be weak. If you've got a back, lower back pain, particularly, I see this a lot, where ladies are very weak in their pelvic floor. So back issues can make a big difference. If you've got cold flu, things like that, you can find your pelvic floor is a lot weaker. Now we're just going to do a, a squeeze and release se session lying on your back. Now I did go to a, a, a specialist women's health physio myself for my own uh, dysfunction and she actually put a probe inside and then she measured it. It was like candy crush for your vagina on a phone which is really good uh, but not really good I don't know but anyway <laughs> candy crush for you for your vagina and you can actually buy these actually on uh, Amazon so if you want to send me a link I'll find you it for it um but this is uh, important we did it we tried to do the exercise in all the different positions so when I stood up it was a lot harder to do the pelvic floor exercises because gravity is against us I find that I can feel that area myself better when I lie on my side and that showed also but one of the main most ladies find it easy when they're lying on your back so it's get get on your bed lie on the back and put the ball a ball or a cushion between the knees and just find that nice long position in the spine and then just find the hip bones so you know where you are, starting to become aware of this area. And then I just want you to relax everything. I've got that ball between the knees, relax and let your arms open wide, let the jaw relax away from the face. So we're gonna take a nice deep inhale. And as we exhale, we're gonna squeeze the ball with the knees. And as we do that, feel as if it's pulling up through the inner thighs and then squeeze your anus and squeeze your vagina and then if you can squeeze your urethra as well so it's the whole of that area right from the back all the way to the front and then let go let's do that again take an inhale relax 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 so it's almost like the your legs are coming away from the ball so it helps you to relax relax everything you might want to do a little wiggle so you're not feeling tense because sometimes we find that you get much more tense it's not like when you start any exercise session you're not used to the feeling of it take an inhale as you exhale squeeze the ball with the knees squeeze the anus the vagina and the urethra and then hold it here for 10 counts now it, when you first do this you'll find about when you're at number five it's just let's go automatically like again uh, if you do any weight training you'd find that when you first do it and then just let everything go. So take the ball away, rock the knees and relax everything. Really important. Another way to relax is to put the soles of the feet together and let your legs just relax here before you start the next one. So that's just an example of about 15 different exercises that we can do with Pilates to help um, that area. But you know, um, one of the most important things is that actual relaxation technique. And with the busy lifestyle and stressful lives that most women have these days, we yeah. can find that, that is an issue more than anything. So uh, there's obviously a lot more to it than that. Um, but that was just a little taster for you there. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. Have a little go yourself. Now, the times that you need to do it, if you can start doing it once a day in that fashion, and you're going to pull up for... 
10 times. So you're going to hold for 10 at the top and let go 10 times. Now, 10 times is a lot. So just be aware that that takes a lot of time. You may feel a lot of tense, tension in between. So just relax. That relaxation is very important. And then we also need to train the fast twitch, twitch muscles. So what I like to do is get the ball here. I'm now sitting on the chair. I've got my sit bones down. I'm going to hold the ball. And as I twitch my twitch, this is the best word. So you're yeah. flicking your vagina, basically. You've, you're going to use the flat use the quicker muscle tissues which are in those layers and you're going to go squeeze 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 so i'm squeezing my hands as i'm squeezing my anus and vagina yeah without using my buttock muscles this is an inner movement again this is a very quick tour because this does take many weeks to learn and you might not feel it the first time i do get quite a lot of ladies that come and they're actually not feeling anything and they can't get that feeling at all. So try lying on your side, try lying on your front, whatever you way you feel that you, you can actually get the feeling inside. So like if I'm squeezing my hand, I can feel my hand. So, you know, it's that sort of sensation. So it's, sometimes it does take a while to get the knack of it. That but that's ball that you're using, is yes. it a soft ball or a hard ball? Because a lot of people have got them big gym balls at home. Could they use that or not? Too big. That was. I'd use a cushion if you haven't got uh, a little ball like these are Pilates blender balls. But you know, a little a cushion would do the same job. It's just so that you visually are kind of doing something because you. It's like what am I doing? I don't really know, and it's difficult. Yeah. You can't see. So if, by doing that, you're actually connecting the inner thigh muscles, and they are directly connected to that basket of muscles. There's a lot of technology. The other thing is also we know it need to keep our buttocks really strong. So there's a whole set of exercises to help with those as well. So it's a big program. It's a whole body approach. It's about nutrition. It's about all sorts of other things as well that we've been talking about today. So it's a whole big program. It's not just about the Kegels. It's about releasing the body, strengthening the body as a whole, as well as, as, as the actual Kegels. But I thought that's the biggest one that you could start with uh, if you don't want to do the whole course. And is this is why Pilates is so good, because you mentioned earlier about the Pilates, about your pelvic floor is linked to so many different areas. So this is why Pilates hit ticks all the boxes, because you're basically strengthening your whole body. Is that right? It is. And also there's a, a mindful approach to Pilates, which I believe is also in yoga, but it's more so in Pilates. We're a bit more technical with the muscles, I believe. Um, so because you're already being mindful in Pilates, it's a very much a mind body approach anyway. Like I said, with the key in the door thing, it is in the mind. Yeah. You're thinking and then your bladder just lets go. So you've got to kind of say, no, I don't need to go to the loo. There's a whole, there's a whole program on that. It's a whole section on that one. So I won't go into it now, but that, I'm just touching on the basics. Yeah. So Pilates is very good, but also strength training in general. If you get your body strong in whatever way, going to the gym or doing a lift lean or doing a body pump or something like that, you will find that that muscle also will become strong. It's about the blood flow going through the body. It's just the strength of the whole body and mind you know, it, yeah, there's a whole connection. There is also a huge thing about drinking coffee and tea and how that can weaken the bladder at this age as well. So you can have caffeine sensitive um, a bladder tissue. And this is a very, very usual. I see this a lot. So often if ladies having a trouble, I just say, try at the moment, try and wean yourself off the coffee. Don't come off it completely because I had one person who was actually felt like they got flu when they came off coffee yeah. straight away. So coffee and tea, and um, just make sure, because tea also has caffeine in it, even decaf coffee. When I went to see the uh, the yeah. pelvic health specialist, she said even decaf has caffeine in it. Yeah. So try to replace that with uh, fruit teas, water. Don't stop drinking. Don't stop drinking. You will yeah. find that that can make a huge difference. So that's an easy tip to try if you want to yourself. Like you said, Sue, this is such a huge uh, subject and we are literally just touching on all the different points. So I'm sure at one point we will go back into more detail with all these little points. Uh, thank you so much. What I want you to do now is just to kind of sum up what we've just been saying in those last 50 minutes and just give us three top tips. What do you think are the three main points people can do to improve their pelvic floor? So make sure that you orgasm a lot. 
Number one. Great. Love that one. That'll be great for the train, won't it? And number two is just take some time for yourself to try those exercises. Really important. And also the third thing is to relax. Very important to relax um, and just take your time uh, with yourself, your mind, your body, relationship. Um, you know, that's it. And then it is nearly Valentine's Day. So we've got to ask your personal question. What have you got lined up for Valentine's Day? Have you got a nice evening planned for him or is he going to surprise you? Well, we're hoping to go on holiday. So we'll be on holiday. Yay. And I'm thinking, it's a nice restaurant there. We'll just go there. We don't really do that. This isn't, you know, I've been married for 30 years. And to be honest, we don't do those big occasions. We don't feel that that is needed for our relationship um so i'm a bit anti valentine's day for that reason i don't think one day you should just show your love i think you should show your love in different ways throughout the year so for me it'll just be we're on holiday and yeah what about you Are you have you got any love interest jody well last year remember i was personally trying to do a day to week and it failed miserably so what i'm doing now is kind of what you kind of touched on earlier is just try to improve my own self-confidence and my own physical well-being and then the love style will come on so unless somebody magically invites me I'm not going anywhere for Valentine so I'm fr if anyone's listening and wants to take me on a date feel free to invite me somewhere that's really <laughs> good De definitely <laughs> great Right. So where can people find more info about Pilates in Derby online about the lovely Susan Booth? OK, you can find me on a live Pilates Susan on Instagram. I'm Supermarket Sue on TikTok. There's lots of tips there about eating healthily for the menopausal woman. I'm at alivepilates.co.uk and I also run retreats day retreats, half day retreats in the Derbyshire area. And that's called notathome.com. So we have some of those events coming up. And what do you think for specific pelvic floor? Do they th do you think it can be cured with a one-off session? Do you need regular Pilates classes? What's the kind of recommendation? Well, it'd be really good if you could do my course, <laughs> which is coming online soon. I'm building it at the moment, so I'm going. I'm building an online course so you can watch it as you go, um, and you know you can start to know the science and all that around it. It's quite important that bit to learn about yourself and then it's an ongoing thing now you can obviously do the pelvic floor exercises if you haven't got a prolapse we haven't talked about prolapse that's another podcast yeah if you don't have a prolapse you're able to do those exercises by the way but if you do have a prolapse i definitely recommend that you go to a pelvic health physio um, um, which you can find online easily if you're in the Derbyshire area I have a contact of one if you need to um, because that is a different type of exercises that you need to do for that so um, yes you can do those within my classes or any Pilates classes if you like but obviously do them at home it's an ongoing thing we need to do these and we need to do them for life like we do any exercise Great. Right. So thank you so much. Thank you for sharing some of your personal life as well. I don't think we put that in the uh, the mock up, did we? <laughs> right. Have a great Valentine's. Keep doing amazing work and we'll speak to you again soon. Thanks for having me. Okay. Enjoy. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Please remember to like, give me a comment share with your friends and of course subscribe to my channel. Thank you.